So hey everyone, welcome to the fourth video of project one. So in the previous video, what we did was we set up our lab environment wherein we had uh, Java and Maven both installed onto an EC2 instance, which we were using as our development environment. And then we cloned our code in the second video itself. And then we went ahead and installed Java and Maven. And finally, we also went ahead and uh, executed the Maven goal, which was Maven install which got all of our uh, source code files bundled and we finally got a jar file as our uh, final artifact within the target directory. So in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to get our uh, database up and running in Amazon RDS. And I'm going to show you as to how to connect to the database and also go ahead and uh, create the schema within the database, which is nothing but our student database and a student table, which has ID and name as uh, two columns. Okay. So let's get started. Let's go to Amazon RDS. So I've already logged into my AWS account as a root user and you can find Amazon RDS from clicking under services and going to databases and clicking on RDS. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new database instance for us and to keep it very simple and to keep it within the free tier so that you guys are also able to do it alongside me. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, MySQL as my database engine with the free tab. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new database. I'm going to choose MySQL. I'm going to not worry about the version of the MySQL right now. I'm going to keep it to 5.7, but the, under the templates, I'm going to choose free tier so that I have only dbt2 dot micro available for me to use the database instance identifier. I'm just going to call this as student DB. And the master username is going to be admin, whereas the master password is something that I'm going to keep, which I can remember should be eight characters in length. And you can see by default, when you chose the free tier over here, the dbt2 dot micro is set by automatic. I'm not going to go with storage auto scaling because right now I'm perfectly fine with 20 GB of allocated storage. And you can see over here that since we are within the free tier, multi AZ deployment has been grayed out. That's totally fine. According to me. And we are going to choose the default VPC uh, throughout this entire project. We are going to work with the default VPC. And since I, I would like to connect to this database from um, my laptop, I would like to keep the endpoint publicly accessible for right now. But then later as an improvement, you can move this database into a private subnet. So for right now, it's going to be within the public subnet so that we will be able to connect to it from the outside. And again, this, this is a project that we are going to have where a lot of people can easily understand it. So I'm not going to complicate this by having a private subnet architecture over here. It's all going to be in the public subnet. Okay. And when you go ahead and uh, give publicly accessible, yes, you will be able to connect to it from uh, the outside world, which is from my laptop. And again, the security group that I'm going to associate with this database is critical for me to connect to the database over port 3306. So I'm going to leave it to the default security group for right now. So everything else is going to be the default configuration. I'm going to directly go ahead and click on create database. So it's saying that the passwords do not match. Let me just retype my passwords once again. I think it should match this time. So let's go down and click on create database. So for this database to come up, it should take at least um, a few moments or a few minutes. So we will uh, wait until the database comes up and then I'll resume the uh, recording for this session. In the meantime, uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the security group in order for us to connect to it. So click on your database and go down to security groups. It's the default security group. Let us open it in a new tab and let's just check our security inbound rules. So as to see whether we have access to the database. So in our inbound rules, port 3306 is right now logged down to only my IP address. Let me just check whether that is still my IP address. Okay. So my IP address has changed. So let me go ahead and just modify all of these to just be from my IP address. So this is the main security rule that is uh, important for you to connect to the database. So it's, it has to be 3306 and it, you should only be able to connect to this database. So let's go ahead and click on save rules. So our rule has been saved. So going back to the RDS console, it will at least take five to 10 minutes for this database to come up. So I'll see you once this has completed. So hey everyone, yeah, I'm, I'm back. So this database took at least 
10 to 15 minutes for it to create. Uh, I'm not sure why it's a pretty small DVT to micro. But anyway, since the database is in the backing up state right now, I think we will be able to connect to this database. So let's click on the DB identifier and let's take a look at the endpoint that we need to connect to. So let's copy this endpoint. And let's go ahead and try connecting to this database. Since we have already manipulated the security group, I think it should be pretty simple for us to directly connect to this database. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to use the MySQL utility. So I hope you guys should already have this installed in your laptop. You can have the MySQL server installed and so on, which should be pretty easy for you guys to just connect to this database from your laptop itself. So just go ahead and type MySQL hyphen H for the host. Uh, sorry, I think. Yeah, MySQL hyphen H for the host, hyphen caps fee, P, caps P for the port 3306, uh, hyphen U for the user, which is admin, and hyphen P for the password. So I'm going to enter the password and it should allow me to connect to the database. So right now we have connected to the database. We are having this MySQL utility with our, with our cursor over there, which means we have successfully connected to this database. So you have to use this command MySQL hyphen H uh, with the endpoint name hyphen caps P for the port hyphen U for the user and hyphen P for the password. And whatever password you gave as your master password while creating the database, that is the same password that you have to give. So once you're connected, let's type the command show databases. So we don't have a student database. Let's go ahead and create one. So let's say create database student. Put a semicolon, hit enter. So it has created a database for us. Okay, so I don't think it takes clear. Okay, anyway, so since we have created the database, the next thing that we have to do is use the database. So use student semicolon. So right now our database has been changed. Let's go ahead and create a table. So let's say create table student. Let's open up the curly braces and let's say ID int of 10 primary key. I think it's primary underscore key, but let's check. I think it should be primary space key. Okay. And let's put a command. Let's also have name var care. 100 characters, close the curly braces, hit semicolon and hit enter. Okay, so it has created a table student. Let's go ahead and insert some values into this table student. Let's say insert into table values. Sorry, it should be insert into student values. So one is going to be the uh, ID. And then, or even if you don't give the ID, I think it should auto increment, but we haven't given auto increment. So therefore we will give the ID and in single quotes, let's give the name. Close the braces, uh, hit semicolon, hit enter. One row has been added. So let's add one more. So let's put two as my twin brother's name and three as my elder brother's name. I do have two brothers. So since we have inserted all of the values into the database, uh, into the table, which is student, with, which is within the student database, let's try to retrieve all of the values. Let's say select asterisk from student. So it lists all of our values, one Akshay, two Ashray, and three Aditya. So right now, since we have wrapped up with the database configuration, creating the schema and the table and so on, uh, in the next video, what we are going to do is we are going to modify our code a little bit which is there in our local development machine, which is nothing but our EC2 instance. And let's connect from that EC2 instance to our database. And let's try to see if it's able to fetch uh, the first value, which is nothing but one and Akshay. Okay. So I will see you guys in the next uh, video. To exit from this MySQL command utility, type exit and you'll be back to your uh, laptop.